I personally don't know how anyone can give a full review on a camera after using it just a few hours over one or two weeks. Anyhow, this is my unbiased review of the Sony ZV-1 after using it extensively for about a month. And in this video, I'm going to cover over 40 features and about 20 use cases to help you decide if it's the right camera for you. Spoiler alert, this is an amazing content creation device for hybrid shooters. Salut YouTube, it's Christophe Langlois and this is my 18th video on the Sony ZV-1. I've got two main goals for all those videos. One is to help you decide if it's the right camera to purchase. And second is to help you make the most of your brand new Sony ZV-1. But first, the elephant in the room. Is the Sony ZV-1 camera the best looking camera ever? No, or at least not out of the box. And more importantly, this is not only a vlogging camera. This is an excellent pocket camera to capture both excellent pictures and great looking videos. So this review won't be about specs, but all about user experience. And in a minute, I'll talk you through 20 features that I love, 13 features that I hate, and 12 features that are not amazing, but I don't really care about. Then I'll share my personal thoughts on who I believe this camera is for and the prospective buyers who shouldn't even bother considering the Sony ZV-1. That is, of course, in my humble opinion. And if you find this video helpful, please give us a big thumbs up, consider subscribing, and please consider as well buying the recommended camera and accessories using some of our affiliate links down below. Okay, and now I will start with the things I love about the Sony ZV-1. Improved handling. Indeed, I owned a lot of RX100 bodies in the last few years, but I'm uh, very pleased to uh, report that Sony did a much better job with the ZV-1. So first of all, there's a built-in handle here, which makes it much easier actually to hold the device with one hand. And it's also the physical buttons at the top very easy to uh, start a video, for instance, and uh, access some of the custom buttons. Please bear in mind that we lost some of the controls and that's gonna be for my other section on things I hate. Flip out screen. So I personally believe that's a great addition for such a compact camera. The ability again to flip the screen all the way and have it facing you whenever you're operating it, especially if you're operating it on your own. So that's very good. And also it gives you the ability to offer some protection to your camera. So by just switching it and closing it, and then you've got like, again, a welcome protection for your screen at any time when you're not using it. Hot shoe mount. So again, this is in my book, a game changer, because now I don't have to bother buying like cages, which I never liked. They add a lot of bulk onto your device. Now it's very easy, it's there, so you can use whether the included accessory here, which is very good, actually does a good job uh, cutting the wind when you're outside for your audio. Also add an external mic, a LED light, or anything you'd like to add onto your Sony ZV-1 to improve your production value. Startup time. It's very easy and very quick to start shooting or capturing video with the Sony ZV-1. Audio quality from the internal mics and also the convenience of the included accessories, which is the wind muff or dead cat, which does a very good job in windy weather. On the topic of audio, I'll invite you to check my video where I reviewed 12 external mics for the Sony ZV-1. Overall picture quality. I personally believe that the quality of the photos and also the video footage from the Sony ZV-1 is truly outstanding considering the limitation of this device, which are one, the one inch sensor, also the non-changeable lens. It does a very good job and it's a big step up compared to any smartphones on the market today. Which leads me to talk about ISO performance. Again, I invite you to check my uh, couple of videos uh, comparing the low light capability of the Sony ZV-1 versus the iPhone 11 Pro and the DJI Osmo Pocket, because you're gonna see that there's no match. What you'll get from the Sony ZV-1 in low light in terms of quality, in terms of autofocus, is much better, again, than any smaller device available on the market right now. Dynamic range is very good from, again, the little sensor here. As I mentioned in my video where I share 100 photos taken with the Sony ZV-1, and I invite you to check it and download those photos, by the way, even the JPEG files offer you a lot of flexibility in the highlights, the shadows, and to fine tune your images the way you want them to look. 
built-in ND filter. So this is very handy to have both for photos and videos. For photos, I like it even more because you've got an ND filter auto, which means that the camera will know when to kick in the ND filter. But on the video side, it's good as well. It won't save your footage if it's super bright outdoors, but you need to be very careful not to forget if your ND filter is on or off. Because if it's on and you go indoors, then it will uh, lead to a lot of problems. Uh, so you need to please be mindful, like to switch it off as soon as you're done with it. Autofocus, it's mostly stellar on the Sony ZV-1, um, whether in photo or in video, because now there's a high autofocus, for instance, in video mode, whether you're close or you're far from the camera, you can be like very confident that the camera will do a great job tracking your face, which is very important, of course, especially if you're a solo shooter. Animal IAF. I've got a pet, I love a mini schnauzer, she's three years old, and for me this is invaluable. I like taking pictures of her, but she's really infuriating because she would never pose for me. Um, but the IAF is a game changer. It works very well again, whether you're at 24, at 70 millimeter, and if you've got pets, but also uh, kids, of course, that will be uh, very much appreciated and you'll be very happy with the pictures you can take very quickly from the Sony ZV-1. Live streaming. A few weeks ago, I posted a video whereby I used the Sony ZV-1 to record myself and stream live on YouTube. Um, with a USB capture card, you can do that easily via HDMI. And if you check the video, you're gonna see that this produces like some great footage. So again, that gives you versatility and you could easily use the Sony ZV-1, not only for your live streams on the likes of YouTube or Facebook, but also as a virtual cam to use for your web conferences and uh, other professional conference calls. Product showcase mode. A lot of people were excited when Sony uh, announced this new feature and I'm happy to confirm that it's working extremely well. So basically, uh, with a click of a button, you can just change the Sony ZV-1 settings automatically and that will give you the opportunity then to put objects close to the lens and or in your way even. And, uh, and then the camera will focus exclusively on those and produces some nice bokeh, of course, because usually you tend to be closer to the lens. So this is a great feature, especially if you do a lot of talking heads on YouTube and you like the focus pools whereby you show a product, the camera won't have any problem doing it. It's gonna be seamless and it's gonna be easy to achieve even for beginners on YouTube. And now I'd like to go back to the photography features of the Sony ZV-1. Object tracking. This is an amazing feature which works extremely well. So basically what you can do, you can just half press focus on one specific object or subject and then it gives you the opportunity to recompose whilst still sticking with the autofocus on that specific object. So that's extremely useful in photography that helps you to get the best image, the best composition without having to break in a sweat in terms of focusing on the right object. Shutter speed in photography mode. Again, that's a game changer for me, especially if you come from a smartphone. This little camera gives you the ability to freeze the action very easily. Um, so for instance, you've got pets I mentioned, but kids as well, they're running. That camera will enable you to do that. Freeze the action, the ISO performance is good enough to still uh, produce very good quality pictures and pictures you'll be very happy to share on social media, for instance. Slow motion. This camera is great to capture some slow motion footage. Um, the quality is excellent, up to 120 frames per second. That is in 1080p in, in regular video shooting mode. You can also go to 240, 480 and 960. The quality degrades, of course, the slower you go, but even at 240, you can get some very decent, very usable footage. So that makes this camera a great, again, camera to shoot cinematic footage, for instance. Battery charging. So a lot of people complain with the poor or modest battery life with the Sony ZV-1. I didn't really see that. I knew what to expect. I think it's very good for what it is. They're very small. But the ability to charge it via USB using a power bank and being able to charge it even if your battery is almost like zero, totally depleted, that's a great feature and it's working very well and it will come handy for your live streams, for instance. Stabilization. So Sony markets this camera heavily about vlogging. Is it the best camera for vlogging around? 
not out of the box, but it's pretty good and I'll talk about it in a second. Um, but the stabilization on it, so you've got a few modes, you've got a no, so a standard and active. Active is fairly good, it crops a lot, so again, let's talk about it in the cons. But what a lot of people are not aware of is that the Sony ZV-1 uh, includes a gyroscope. So, and that's great news because what you could do if you're happy to do some post-processing work, you can easily shoot without stabilization and use the information from the gyroscope to then apply a much better, much fine-tuned stabilization in your uh, video editing software. Focus frame color. I know you're gonna laugh, like you say, it's nothing, but it's very good that Sony, at last, they also included on the Sony ZV-1 the ability to change the color of your focus frame. So from white, which is usually very difficult to see, uh, to, for instance, red, which I found a much better option to, again, uh, keep track of where your focus frame is. Bluetooth remotes. I know it sounds like trivial, or you're gonna say it's not the only camera to do so, but Sony has a couple of good options to help you control your Sony ZV-1 via Bluetooth. Uh, there's the grip slash Bluetooth remote option, which I think it's far too expensive, but it's also the other one that I recommended for my first video, actually, on the Sony ZV-1, which is okay priced, it's still a bit expensive, but it gives you a lot of flexibility when both shooting photos and shooting videos. Okay, and now let's talk about the things I hate about the Sony ZV-1. First of all, Sony heavily marketed this camera as a content creation device for vloggers. And I believe that was a huge mistake from Sony's marketing department. This is a great, again, content creation device for hybrid shooters, but I would argue that it's not optimum at all if your sole or essential use case is vlogging. A 24 mm lens is not wide enough for vlogging. At least most people agree on that. Uh, first of all, so it's not wide enough. Second of all, it's not really 24 because, uh, and people proved it doing the math, that it's not a real 24 millimeter lens at its widest. It's more around 26, I believe. And finally, if you decide to use the active stabilization mode, which is required to get the smoothest footage, then it will crop again and you'll be more around the 30, 31 millimeter mark. Stabilization, it's not stellar. It helps with the EIS and the active mode, but as I mentioned previously, it crops a lot. And again, it's not like market leading or it's okay, but you'll still experience a lot of shakes, more subtle, but still shakes if you decide to walk while talking to the camera, which is usually what vloggers do. No wrist strap included in the box. This is a weird one. I personally don't understand why Sony couldn't just include a very cheap, at least, wrist strap, because still the camera is better to operate with the grip, but it's still super slippery. Less physical controls. So as I said previously, it's great, better to handle. You've got the flippy screen, you've got the bigger video recording button, but we missed two key elements. One is the mode dial on the top, which I think is still much uh, easier to use and faster to use when you shoot photos and videos. And it's the ring around the lens, which again, on the RX100, for instance, can be customized to quickly change a setting like aperture or shutter speed, for instance. So I personally understand Sony had to make compromises and uh, rethink the design, the ergonomics for vloggers, but still at least the control ring would have been a great addition to that very small device. Rather limited touchscreen functionalities. Indeed, you can't really do much with the screen in terms of touch interface. It's pretty limited. If you customize it, you can tap the screen to focus uh, and you can also zoom in on your pictures if you're in uh, gallery mode, so which is okay. But for instance, like a Panasonic or a um, Canon camera will offer you a UI, which is 10 times better and more useful, especially again, if you're a solo content creator. Audio bug. I don't know if it's gonna be fixed, but uh, until now, after months, it's still there. So basically you plug an external mic in, uh, you start recording, and if for some reason the mic's got a battery and dies, or you decide to unplug, the external mic, then you won't have any audio for the reminder of your video. So again, please be mindful of it. And that's one other reason of considering using an external recorder as I uh, recommended in my external mics video. There is no way to monitor audio on your Sony ZV-1. So again, that's a bummer. 
some people say maybe, oh, I don't need to. It's still very useful because then if you record a lot of videos, you go back home and then you realize that there's a problem, whether your audio level was too low, too high, or you're clipping all the time, whatever, you won't have the opportunity to uh, preempt that issue on the Sony ZV-1 because there is no headphone input on the Sony ZV-1. Which leads me to the problem of the micro USB port. Indeed, it would have been much better to have a USB-C port on the Sony ZV-1. Few reasons. One, uh, transferring files is much faster. Uh, second, you could um, also use the USB-C to power the device uh, and that would be faster as well or for recharging your batteries. And third, again, it could help to give you the ability via a dongle to use headphones to monitor your audio as Fuji uh, enabled its uh, users to do with a couple of cameras, including the Fuji Film X-T4. So there is only uh, one SD card slot, which doesn't bother me too much, but the problem, and not just on the Sony ZV-1, is that it's slow. It's a UHS-1, which again is gonna be a big bottleneck in terms of recording to your card. That means that, for instance, if you'd like to use the extremely incredible capabilities of uh, the Sony ZV-1 in terms of, for instance, like a rapid shooting, right? Then it's gonna take a lot of time to clear the buffer. And that means that for all that time, you won't be able to do anything with your camera and certainly not shoot more pictures or start shooting a video. High frame rate video modes or HFR modes. Those are driving me nuts. Uh, I shot a video recently and I shared it with you about slow motion. I shared 23 video samples, but I seriously recorded maybe 100 plus because it's very hard to use. Uh, indeed, you have to set up everything properly first. So uh, all your settings, aperture, shutter speed, even focus. Then you click to lock it in. And then only then you're able to click the shutter button to start recording the slow motion footage. But that drove me nuts for some reason. I can't get used to it. So I forgot it's locked in that I want to change it. For me, it wasn't really pleasant to use. Does it yield good results? Yes, in specific environments. If you do it very well, yes, it's still usable. But again, I find it so fiddly to use that I probably won't use those modes very often. I switched on purpose from PAL to NTSC mode to be able to match the frame rates with various devices, including the iPhone, by the way. And this camera, Every time I switch it on and I want to start taking pictures, for instance, or videos, it tells me you are in NTSC mode and that drives me insane. So there might be a way to fix that. So please, if you know, leave a comment in the comment section below. And the last thing I hate, again, it's me essentially, using uh, Sony cameras, for instance, the A6400 now, I also own the A7 III, uh, the ability to have the ISO auto minimum shutter speed option which enables you basically in, in P mode, which I never use program mode, but also in aperture mode to set the behavior you want from your camera. So basically based on the focal length you're using, uh, based on again, the amount of light, the shutter speed will change, which will automatically impact the ISO. As a result, that will help you freeze the action. Even again, if you're using like a telephoto, so like a 70 millimeter, you'll be able to do that without having yourself to set it up fully manually. Now, very quickly, let me uh, talk you through 12 features or facts that I don't really like about the camera, but they don't bother me. First of all, it's the Sony menu system. It's not great, it's convoluted, but to me, when Sony started to introduce the My Menu settings, the ability again to pick and choose your uh, favorite settings in one place that you can access quickly, that solved the issue. I'm not saying that I wouldn't love to have a much better tactile uh, user interface though. Then battery life. As I mentioned before, some people are complaining. In my experience shooting like now the 18th videos and thousands of photos, I never really complain about it. I think it's seriously good for what it is. And again, I always have like a external battery pack with me and a couple of batteries just in case. No optical viewfinder on the Sony ZV-1 versus the RX100 line of cameras. I owned a lot of uh, RX100s. I never really used the optical viewfinder. I found it very small and a bit clunky to use, especially uh, up to uh, the Mark 5 or 5A. So uh, it doesn't bother me at all. And especially if you're a vlogger or video creator, that shouldn't be a big of an issue anyway. No built-in flash. Again, never used it on the RX100. 
So that's a 24 to 70, so you're missing out on the 70 to 200 range offered by the RX 106 and 7. I mean, it would be nice, but I personally didn't want to sacrifice the speed, the aperture, and then the amount of bokeh and the low light uh, performance of the device. So I'm much happier with the ZV-1 than the uh, RX 100 Mark 7. That one is not a huge deal, but it bothers me quite a bit though. I find that it's not super reliable. It struggles a bit if you're wearing glasses. Indeed, the IAF uh, won't be as good or as reliable, especially in low light. Time lapses. Well, I'm not really shooting timeless very often, or at least not with the Sony ZV-1. So uh, basically it's good, it's very capable, but it will create some photos and you'll have to then process those photos in your video editing software. Uh, it doesn't create like uh, videos in camera, easy to share like on the Canons, for instance. So that might be a positive for you. That might be a negative for most. The skin softening feature. I have to tell you that I've never used it. So it's not for me, I don't really care for that. It's available, a lot of people demoed it online. And be careful though, because it's switched on by default when you buy the Sony ZV-1. Bokeh mode. So this is useful for some people. Uh, you can press a button and automatically the camera will do a number of things to change the settings and make sure that the background is as blurred as possible. In practice, I've never really used it. I tried it, of course. Uh, just beware, because when you click it, you're in defocus, so bokeh mode. When you click it again, you're in clear mode, which is not the general mode, but it's clear mode, still within the bokeh mode feature. And when you do that, it tends to ramp up the ISO. So please be very careful. And when you're done with the bokeh mode, make sure you click in the back and you exit that mode pretty fast. Macro capability. I personally think that camera could do a bit better. You can go close, but it's not as close as I would have liked. So when you're at 24, it's decent. But again, the magnification is not mind blowing at all. A problem that a lot of vloggers mentioned is uh, your inability to see the screen when you're wearing sunglasses. Well, listen, I, I don't do that very often, so it doesn't really matter to me. But by the way, there's a simple way to fix that, and you'll see it in my best value accessories for the Sony ZV-1. It's just by applying a very cheap um, screen protector onto your device. And finally, Sony's mobile apps are not great based on my experience. So the Sony's Imaging Edge, I think app now, that's the name, both uh, Android and iPhone, it's okay but it's not as good, I feel, as the Canon app, for instance. So it's a bit more limiting, and I still find it a bit fiddly when you want to synchronize and just, for instance, transfer files and photos and videos from your Sony ZB-1 to your mobile device. And now I will tell you who the Sony ZB-1 is for, in my humble opinion. I believe it's for hybrid shooters. Indeed, if you're really interested in both photos and videos, this is a great device to have in your pocket at all time. If you shoot action, or if you like to freeze the moment, and you've got, for instance, kids and pets, great device for photography. Travelers who value the small form factor and weight. This is, again, a great option. It's not just because it doesn't weight too much at all, but also it's small, so anything you'd like to do with it is going to be easier. You don't need like a heavy uh, tripod. Uh, you don't need like a heavy weight slider. So think about that. It's not just the size of the device, but it's also the possibilities that it will offer you compared to using, for instance, a fully geared um, full frame camera, which is going to crush the Sony ZV-1 in terms of quality, low light capability, and so on and so forth, by the way. But I believe it's not the point. Here you'll have excellent footage, excellent photos, and it fits in your pocket. Okay, so I'd say vlogger, but more static vlogger. Vloggers focus more on cinematic than like walking and talking. Again, great camera. If you don't push the stabilization too much, again, with like uh, running, for instance, this is going to be a great option. Also, its fast lens will help you to get some nice bokeh and background separation if you want to emphasize on specific like monuments or objects or people. Anyone who enjoys shooting slow motion footage, Again, more cinematic footage, usually people like shooting slow motion. Uh, this is a great slow motion device. People who like shooting in low light environments or indoors in a YouTube studio, for instance, this could be a great option, assuming you've got good lighting as well to make sure, again, you light your shot properly and this will yield some very good results and very decent looking footage. 
it's a great option for enthusiasts with a limited budget. Again, with that, you don't have to think about buying additional lenses. So again, it's pros or cons. Uh, but for the price, you've got great autofocus, great uh, image quality, and again, it's highly pocketable. So great, again, for enthusiasts on a budget. That could be a great option for beginners on YouTube or minimalist YouTubers uh, who are on the go and uh, need just to set up a uh, video production setup very quickly. The Sony ZV-1 could be also a great B-cam or C-cam for any Sony shooters out there. Indeed, you'll be able to match the colors pretty well between an APS-C, a full frame or the Sony ZV-1 camera. Which leads me to the final use case, I believe, is anyone who is keen to do some color grading, some processing on their footage. Again, the Sony ZV-1 will give you a lot of flexibility to, to do so, especially due to the fact that you can use one of the many flat color profiles available to the Sony ZV-1 users. Okay, and now the people that I believe shouldn't bother considering the Sony ZV-1. Let's start with the smartphone users out there who are very used to the convenience of having the phone all the time with them and also who are very used to the easy user interface. Because I'm telling you, that will be a shock to you if you decide to upgrade to the Sony ZV-1. But of course, it's not rocket science and you'll get used to it still pretty quickly. If you need to share content online on social media very quickly, probably stick with the smartphone because that's going to be a bit painful. It takes time to share the files between devices. Uh, the files tend to be bigger as well, so please don't bother. And if I were you, I would stick probably to a smartphone. If you're vlogging a lot and you're on the move a lot and you shoot essentially in bright daylight, again, I wouldn't buy this camera solely for the purpose of vlogging. Yes, it's going to yield better results in low light, but the convenience of having like a high-end smartphone, for instance, and having access to the flexibility of the various lenses, being able to publish straight away, this is going to be a much better option. And even the likes of the DJI Osmo Pocket that I compared to the Sony ZV-1 in a couple of videos, you'll see that it's plenty enough, better stabilization, good quality footage, as long as, again, you're in a daylight or a very well-lit environment. If you're someone who don't really care about picture quality, you want good quality, but not prepared to go the extra mile, again, I would probably stick to a high-end smartphone. If you're someone who don't care at all about photography, I, I probably would pass. Because again, it's great for video, but it's also great for photos. And if you're not into that, if your use case is essentially just like capturing video content and vlogging, I would probably skip that one. If you're into photography, but you like controlling everything and you're a fan of manual photography, again, you can achieve it. There is, of course, a manual focus mode, but that's gonna be very fiddly to use. So again, if you're in that topic, but again, so again, if you're in that bucket of people, I would probably pass. If you're someone who need more reach, or you think that at some point you might do, then again, I would probably pass on the Sony ZV-1. I would buy another type of mirrorless camera, probably APS-C, buy a A6100 or A6400, and then at least you'll have the flexibility to potentially buy a longer lens at some point. And if you're into actions, you like running, you like to be in the mud, uh, you like extreme sports, I wouldn't even consider the Sony ZV-1. It will produce good footage, but again, not as stable and it's not as rugged as an action cam like a um, DJI Osmo Action or, of course, a GoPro Hero 8 Black. So I'd probably tend to skip that and opt for an action cam, which is going to be much cheaper as well. And for the same reason, if your budget is tight, this is not super expensive for what it is, but it's still like $800 plus some key accessories you need to buy. Again, think hard and strong. Do you need to upgrade from your smartphone camera? If you've got an iPhone 11 Pro, it's, it's good. It's not that level, but it's still good. Or you can even buy two action cams for the price of that one. So it gives you more creative options. So you really need to think hard and strong if you really need this, if your budget is super tight. And last but not least, to the contrary, if your budget is unlimited or if you're not bothered with size and weight of your camera, skip the Sony ZV-1 and then go and buy an APS-C camera, for instance, or a full-frame camera, something more robust, bigger, heavier. It's going to cost a lot more, 
which will offer you more flexibility and of course yield much better results especially in uh, testing conditions like low light you'll be much happier with such a camera system et voilà so what did you think of the Sony ZV-1? Please share your comments, questions and suggestions in the comment section below. As usual, you'll find some additional comments of mine in the description. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, please give me a big thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Also using our affiliate links would help us a lot. So thanks in advance for that. And last but not least, if you ask me, Christophe, are you happy with your purchase? Because I purchase everything I review on my channel. Yes, I think the Sony ZV-1 is an amazing uh, content creation device for hybrid shooters. So if like me, you enjoy both shooting videos and photos, this could be a great portable addition to your arsenal. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.